AMD's upcoming Zen 4 processors could be up to 40% faster and the 6600 XT was just leaked. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So according to the website chipsandcheese.com, we should be seeing a pretty huge improvement going from our current Zen 3 processors to the Zen 4 processors, and on top of that, supposedly there's also going to be a Zen 3 Plus upgrade. Now, I'm not entirely sure at this point if Zen 3 Plus is going to exist, but if it does end up existing, you can expect that that will likely be named the Ryzen 6000 series of processors, and then the Zen 4 processors will be called Ryzen 7000. But, you know, speaking of Zen 3 Plus, let's go ahead and see what they had to say on that, and then we'll move on to Zen 4, which I think is even more exciting. So here's what they had to say on the matter, quote, Zen 3 Plus looks to be a small IPC gain on base Zen 3, having been told it's more than Zen Plus was over Zen 1, but not much. They then go on to say, I was told that the IO die for Zen 3 Plus desktop is using not quite the same IO die as Zen 4, but uses Zen 4 IP, which I take to mean that it will be using DDR5 and will be on the same node as Zen 4's IO die. Now I found what he had to say on the Zen 3 Plus processors to be pretty interesting because yeah, Although the Zen 3 Plus processors, if they do end up existing, probably won't be a huge improvement in terms of IPC over our current Zen 3 processors, and they'll likely just see some minor gains from clock speed and maybe just a little bit of IPC on top of that. What I do find very interesting is that IO die, like he mentioned, because if it does end up using DDR5 and we end up going to AM5 with DDR5 on Zen 3 Plus, well, then you actually could expect to see a pretty decent jump in performance in some games just moving to DDR5 because from what I've heard so far, DDR5 is going to be a pretty huge improvement, so not only you're going to be getting better speeds out of DDR5, but from what I've heard, you're going to also get ECC support as well, and Ryzen processors do unofficially support ECC memory, so that's going to be pretty awesome, and then on top of that, as far as I know, the uh, DDR5 spec is going to have some pretty decent latencies as well, so you should just be getting overall much better memory than we currently have with our DDR4 systems, and to me, that's pretty dang exciting because not only are there some games and applications out there that could benefit from DDR5, DDR5, but there's also some instances like if you're using an APU where DDDR5 could give you some pretty huge performance gains because with an integrated GPU, they don't really have a whole lot of memory that they can use, so they have to go out to your memory uh, on your system, such as DDDR4, and if it just keeps getting faster and faster, well, then that integrated GPU could get bigger and just have a whole lot more performance. But, you know, enough talking about the Zen 3 Plus processors. Let's move on to Zen 4 because I'm sure that's why a lot of you came here, and this is what they had to say on it. Quote, one common thread in all Zen 4 chatter I've heard is a resounding positivity. From IPC gains over 25%, a total performance gain of 40%, and even possibly finally 5 GHz all core thanks to the new N5 fabrication at TSMC. Now I can't say what is true and what is over exaggeration, however I was told from a trusted source that a Genua engineering sample Zen 4 server chip was 29% faster than a Milan Zen 3 chip with the same core config at the same clocks. So if what he's saying here is true and there is actually a Zen 4 processor out there right now in engineering sample that's getting 29% more performance than a Zen 3 processor, that's pretty huge. Now, of course, that we're talking about a processor that could be effectively two generations away, so if that's the case, it's not quite as impressive, but if the Zen 4 processors end up coming out and the Zen 3 Plus you know, half-step doesn't end up coming out, that would be actually incredibly impressive because you could be talking about a CPU that would be easily up to 40% faster once you account for some clock speed gains over the current Zen 3 processors. So we'll just have to wait and see whether or not Zen 3 Plus does end up coming out or if Zen 4 is going to be the next upgrade path. But, you know, from everything I'm hearing so far, it does look like Zen 3 Plus is probably going to exist. But, you know, either way, it looks like Zen 4 is going to be a pretty huge improvement because if at the end of the day, it does end up being upwards of 40% faster on average than our current Ryzen 5000 series chips, well, you're talking about a CPU that, let's say Zen 3 Plus gets a 15% increase in overall performance. Well, then the uh, Zen 4 processor on top of that would be an additional 25% faster, which is another huge step, and that's kind of similar to the step that we saw going from the Zen 2 processors in the Ryzen 3000 series to the Zen 3 processors in our current Ryzen 5000 series chips, and that was a huge jump. And then on top of that, if you add in the DDR5 that we're going to get, I'm assuming that games are going to see a pretty huge jump going from the Ryzen 5000 to Ryzen 6000 and even Ryzen 7000 series chips, and all of this is very, very exciting and good to see. Now, the only 
only question I have is when is this stuff going to launch? Now, are we going to see maybe Zen 3 Plus at the end of the year and then mid-2022, maybe we'll see Zen 4? Or are they going to just try and skip Zen 3 Plus and get us, you know, Zen 4 early 2022? That's something I don't entirely know at this point, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did turn out that we see Zen 3 Plus at some point in this year to kind of counter the Intel 11th Gen series chips or Intel 12th Gen uh, of chips that are coming out. And then maybe we'll see the Zen 4 processors later next year in 2022 to counter Intel's 13th generation CPUs because from what I'm hearing, Intel's 13th generation of CPUs, if they do end up fabricating it on a either um, 7 nanometer node from themselves or TSMC's 3 nanometer node, will likely pose a pretty big threat to AMD and they're gonna wanna counter it with something equally as impressive. But there's one more thing I wanna talk about in this video before we wrap it up and that's the fact that the 6600 XT was just leaked over on Twitter by the Twitter leaker Komachi. He found it over on an EEC listing and if you go ahead and take a look there, he says that supposedly there was a 12 gigabyte 6700 XT leak. And then on top of that, he questioned whether or not there was going to be a 12 gigabyte 6600 XT and possibly even a 6 gigabyte 6700. Now, I looked at the EEC listing and I couldn't actually find any 6700s on there. So I'm not entirely sure where he's getting the 6 gigabyte 6700 numbers. Potentially he has some sort of other source that's telling him that that's going to exist. That could be the case. Uh, if that is the case, it's very, very strange that you'd have a 12 gigabyte 6700 XT and a 12 gigabyte 6600 XT and then a 6 gigabyte 6700. That kind of doesn't really make any sense to me. Uh, it would definitely allow them to reduce the prices, but overall that just doesn't really make any sense. I mean, who would want to buy that card? Um, now I did see the 6600 XTs that he was talking about and those do look like that could end up being a pretty good card to buy because 12 gigabytes, if it does come in at the right price, would definitely be very tempting. However, we don't know necessarily what the prices are going to be. I'm a little scared that it's going to be kind of expensive. And then on top of that, you know, AMD has not been doing a good job of trying to meet the demand right now. So even if these cards do end up coming out and they have 12 gigabytes of VRM and they have really awesome performance, I'm just a little bit worried that, you know, if this mining situation just keeps going on, that we're going to have a really hard time getting our hands on them. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about the Zen 4 processors? Do you think that we're going to see them this year or sometime next year? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.